is going to mean to us. You don't. Well, it's funny, but... but I keep thinking of our last dance at college. I bought my last new dinner gown for it. It still looks good. And why shouldn't it? I've only worn it twice in the last two years. Cigarette? Mm-hmm. Daddy went broke, but he didn't tell me. He kept up my allowance until commencement. He was grand people, Ruth. Mm. But what a shock when I got home. Oh, I was a selfish little fool not to have realized... How could you have known anything was wrong? I thought I was bouncing from college to the junior league. Ruth Holden. Prominent society girl and all that sort of thing. I thought I was stepping into 10,000 a year as an engineer. And look at me, working for beans in a bank. I've been there three years, and for what? To be fired. Given two weeks' notice so somebody's pet relative could step in on the job. Remember the night of that last dance? We were all talking about what we were going to do. Sure, I remember. Fat Brennan said he wasn't going to work. He was going to steal half a million dollars. He said two years in the pen would be no worse than five years at college. Who wouldn't be glad to serve a few years in prison to secure independence? Without hurting anyone, Jimmy. Waiter. Yes, Wine list. Very good, sir. Jimmy, what are you up to? What did you order? Just a little something you'll like. They'll come at us pretty hard, Ruth. They won't let up for days. I won't break. You mustn't even bend. I'm not afraid of anything. Except the separation. Jimmy, you won't, you won't stop loving me. What funny thoughts go through your little head. Of course I won't. Oh, it's the only way out for us. Marriage on $25 a week. Children, red hands from doing my own washing. Oh, I, I could do it, I suppose, but, but I'd hate it. I wasn't brought up that way, and neither were you. There were certain things we were taught to look on as our rights, and we're going to get them. We're going to get them, and we'll keep our chins up while we're paying. Jimmy Champagne. And the very best fish. But you can't pay for it. Silly, of course I can. It's only a small thing. After tonight, we won't need any money for a couple of years. And then we'll have plenty. Jimmy, suppose it isn't a couple of years. Suppose it's ten. Well, suppose it is. I'd only be 33. How many men have fortunes at that age? Come on, darling. Here's to us. Well, that 
that's that. Now let's see if the thing still works. that there's a $100,000 sealed in a fireproof container inside that old music box. And please take care of it. Oh, I'm afraid even Uncle Billy wouldn't understand that. Do you want to dance? Dance, Jimmy. Dancing to a different tune tomorrow. Any regrets? No, Jimmy. No regrets. It's strange it should stop playing that way. Suppose something goes wrong and your uncle has it fixed. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Jimmy. When Uncle Billy gets that ladder, he'll put the music box away in his safe, and he'll never let it out. They'll get me in the morning. I won't deny anything. And then they'll check back on every move I've made, and they'll land on you. And I won't deny anything. Good girl. Hey, I've only got ten minutes to make the express office. Is the letter ready? Almost. All but my signature. Well, step on Make yourselves comfortable. We well, can talk better if you sit down. Go ahead. What's there to talk about? We admit we took the money, so let's get it over with. $100,000. What did you do with it? Try and find out. Oh, so there is something to talk about after all. It is my job to get that money back. All of it. Sit down. Smoke? Thanks, I've got my own. Why not smoke mine? Why should we be under obligation to you? Well, you are already to the tune of a hundred thousand. So a few cigarettes shouldn't bother your conscience. Now, you kids are too smart to go through with this. Even if you win, you lose the things that money can't buy back. Honor, self-respect. Why not turn it over to me, Jimmy, and we'll call the whole thing square? I'll even get you another job. But not in a bank. Put the irons on, Chief. You're wasting your time. College kids, aren't you? What if we are? Things ran wrong when you went out of school. A lot of your sweat ideas went up in smoke. Nothing ahead but a long, steep road. So you finally decided to take a shortcut and grab over 100,000 and only do a few years in prison. Without hurting anyone. That is, any individual. Well, the lady speaks at last. Yes, without hurting anyone. Except yourselves. How much of that money do you figure on keeping when you get out of prison? All of it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, there's many angles you haven't thought about. Yes. I'll show you. Uh, move a bit. Let me sit between you. That's right. Now, you steal $100,000. You hide it. And you do 10 years in prison. Yes. 10 years. Now, look. You finally get out, and you get your 100000 but it's what we call hot money. What's that? He means he can trace it through the serial numbers on the bills. You can't bank it. You run a risk keeping it on you. So you have to take it to a fence. Or sell it at about 40 cents in the dollar. That leaves you $40,000. 2,000 a piece a year 
for 10 staggered years in prison. 10 of the very best years of your life. Now, can't you see it's not worth the price you'll have to pay? Prison does things to you. Mr. Roberts, I still say you're wasting your time. All right, Casey. Take him along, Casey. Sorry he wouldn't let me help you. DA's pretty tough on smart kids like you. Well, I'll be seeing you. You have shown, even in your confessions and pleas of guilt, a brazen contempt for the law. Therefore, I have no alternative but to impose upon you both an exemplary sentence. You are to serve an indeterminate period of not less than one year, nor more than ten, in the state prison. It is furthermore recommended by the court that no parole ever be granted you. Oh. <laughs> Your boyfriend doesn't do you any good. Come on, tell me, honey. What did you and your boyfriend do with that money? Wouldn't you like to know? I'll find out in time. Maybe you don't know it, but you talk in your sleep. see your girlfriend sometime. Are you kidding? I don't kid, ever. Messengers for the captain of the yard are sometimes sent over to the women's prison. Are they? I can fix you up with that job if you want. Next, kid. Glad to do it for you. I know just how you feel. Sure. Give her this note, will you? What's going on here? What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Report to the matron's office at once. Yes, ma'am. Well? Wasn't well, our fault, Mrs. Cummings. He spoke to us. Get on with your work. Darling, I come over here every day at 10 to deliver the mail to the matron's office. Try and see me. I love you, Jimmy. <sighs> Gee, that's sweet. I love you. Sweetheart! I love you. Yoo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Shut your traps, you mugs. Come on, 98.43. That romantic touch of yours is gonna cost you plenty. Come on. Come on. It's tough he had to lose eight weeks good conduct time just for that. Gee, it's wonderful to have a man think that much of you. Keep staring at me like that for? Just thinking about you. That's all. What about me? Well, I'm getting out of here pretty soon. I could do a lot for you on the outside. Nobody can do anything for me. You don't understand the angles, kid. But skip it, you say so. You know, when you get out of here, the cops are going to be following you. After that dough, you're going to be needing help. Plenty of help. Yeah. Well, yeah. what'd you do with that dough? I sent it to a man named Dave Beerman in Chicago. Dave Beerman? Chicago? How do you spell it? B-E-E-R-M-A-N? No. B-I-E-R-M-A-N. 
Oh, yeah, Dave Berman. Yeah, sure. Damn. The judge himself opposed any parole, and these two haven't shown any desire to mend their ways. Their prison conduct has been pretty good, but... Uh... Uh, listen, Roberts, are you interested in them or in your money? In both. Because you can't divide the two. If you do, you won't have either. You see, I've never looked upon these kids as criminals. They simply got off on the wrong foot. They took quite a step with it. Why keep them in prison? That's what they want, to solve their conscience. They feel they're earning that money. Let them out and... You upset their apple cart. Gentlemen, that's why I feel that freedom on parole, with its restrictions as to conduct, would affect their cure. In what way, Mr. Roberts? Well, if you grant them parole, under special conditions, I'm certain they will lead me to the money. But I'm also certain that they are handed over to me voluntarily. What special conditions? Well, gentlemen, I have here a few suggestions. You better study this. If you get a parole, you'll have to know these rules, forwards and backwards. Eclipse vacuum cleaners, if it's any news to you. Oh, sure, I knew that. I mean, what are you going to do with your lives? It's uh, tough that you can't get married. If you're still that way about each other. We still are. You'll be on parole for eight years. That's a long time to have to wait to get married. Go on, copper. Have a good time. We're wise to you. We know it's no accident that we got that parole. And it's no accident you're on this boat. Right, Jimmy. I'm still working for international surety. And I'm still determined to get back that money. We earned that money, and we're going to keep it. There's this to remember. No matter where you go, we'll pick you up and bring you back. We have agents all over the world. What's the point of all this, Mr. Roberts? The point is there might be a pardon for you to give back that money. A pardon would restore your citizenship. You could get married and... No. All right. Good luck. I'll be seeing you. Now, let's keep in mind the aims and ideals of the company. An Eclipse vacuum cleaner in every American home. Yes, Mr. McClane. Yes, sir. And remember the two P's. Politeness and persistence. Politeness, politeness and, and persistency. persistency. With the emphasis on the persistence. Persistence. It's no easy job. You'll have a lot of competition. Now, come and look at this man. Every salesman is a pinhead. Competition doesn't worry us in the least. That's the spirit, my lad. Now, whereabouts would you like to work? Here in the city? You mean we can start in any place we like? Anywhere in the state. You can pick your own district. How about District 16? You couldn't have picked a better one. Right there. Well, now, good luck to you both. 
And when you get there, remember the two P's. Politeness and, and persistency. Very good. Looks like he's moved. the matter with us? One little setback and we act like we're sunk. All we have to do is go to the bank and find out where he's moved. Well, it's just around the corner. Let's go. Good morning. May I help you? Why, yes. We stopped in to inquire about Uncle Bill Bradley. Has he moved or something? Poor old Uncle Bill passed away some weeks ago. He was a fine, upright man. And the character but that... What happened to his effects? Uncle Bill was a poor businessman. And uh, all of his stock and personal belongings were claimed by his creditors. They sold them to an auctioneer down in the city. Oh, who were the auctioneers? What? Well, isn't that the limit? I'll be hanged if I can think of it now. Funny thing is, my wife's down there attending that sale right now. Sale? What sale? Why, the auction sale, of course. Today? Yes. Today, at 2 o'clock. Well, well, what sort of a name was it? German, English, French, Irish? Irish, that's it. Here. Antiques, department. Well, here we are, auctioneers. Oh, of course, here it is. Ophirna, Dan Ophirna, 7247 Wilton Boulevard. Oh, fair enough. 7247 Wilton Boulevard. Come on. Thanks. Thanks. Sixty is mid. Going at sixty. Sixty once. Sixty twice. Third and final call. Sold to Mr. Holbrook for sixty dollars. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any other article on display here that you would like put up, all you have to do is name it. This music box, please. Splendid. Eddie, music box. Friends, I must ask you to give your particular attention to this rare old music box. A fine example of what is today a lost art. Isn't it beautiful? Did I hear a right, sir? Did you really offer five dollars? Friends, please. Now, I know you come here for bargain, but there are limits. And five dollars for this rare old music box is way, way beyond the limits. Ten dollars. Well, that's a little better. I'll accept the bid as an opener. I've got ten. Who'll make it five more? Offered 10, asking 15. Who'll give me 15? 15. 15 is the bid. Who'll make it 20? Do I hear 20? 20. 20 is the bid. Do I hear 25? 21. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm surprised that I don't get any more bidding. Come on now, who'll make it 30? 30. Ah, that's better. 30 is the bid. Now who'll raise it to 35? 35. 40. 45. I'm bid 45. Now let me hear 50. 50. We can't let it get away. We'll borrow $40 on the car. 50's the bid. Anyone go 60? 55. 60. 60. Now let's have 65. 65. Mr. O'Farrell, open it up and let's have a look at the works. The gentleman wants to see the works. Eddie. Yes. Get a screwdriver. Yes. 75. 85. I'm bid 85. Skip the screwdriver, boy. No time for nonsense. 85's the bid. Will anyone make it 90? Does anyone make it 90? 85 once. 
Eighty-five, twice, ninety. Jimmy, you can't. We've got to. Ninety! Ninety! Let's make it an even hundred. Now, who say the word? One hundred. One hundred bid. An even hundred. Any more? <laughs> One hundred once. One hundred twice. Third and last call. Oh. Mm. Sold to Mr. Victor J. Holbrook for one hundred dollars. Hello, is Mr. Holbrook in? Mr. Caldwell. No, Caldwell. C is in cat. That's right. Suppose he won't see us. He's got to. He just got to. Hello, Mr. Holbrook. I'm the fellow who bid against you for that music box this afternoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holbrook. Come on, honey, the pearly gates are wide open. Oh. It is men like you that add tang and savor to this business. I've been dallying with the most excellent notion. The International Society of Auction Fans. Oh, that's a great idea, Mr. Holbrook. As I was saying, about that music box. Ah, oh, that inevitable music box. How gallantly you resisted me. One touch I loved. A sheer stroke of genius. The way you disposed of that uh, Butinsky, that let's have a look at the works fellow. Mr. Holbrook, may I ask you a question? Delighted, Miss Holden. Your charm is only exceeded by your modesty. Will you sell us the music box? You mean you actually wanted that extraordinary object? We bid every dollar we had on it. I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were just fellow sportsmen. If I'd known you really wanted the thing, I wouldn't have bid a single dollar. We'd be very glad to buy it from you. I say, this is ghastly. You see, I have so many of those wretched things that tinkle that I sent the music box to an aunt of mine in Sunnydale. And the Anne in Sunnydale? Sunnydale? Oh, that isn't so far away. Would you mind telling us her name? Certainly, Mrs. Martha Foster, Sunnydale. She's a perfectly ripping old dodo. I say, I feel absolutely wonky with embarrassment. Won't you please accept one of my trophies? No, thank you. It was the music box. Such a dismal object. Please accept this trinket. It's supposed to have been the pen that Benedict Arnold used when he sold out his country and his soul for a mere hundred thousand dollars. It's your bedtime now, Mr. Holbrook. Oh. There we are. Call me Pinky. All right, Pinky, come along. What now? Well, don't look at me that way. I'm not to blame. Who's blaming you? Well, come on. We can't stand here squawking all night. to stop me bidding. They could have put a deposit on it and raised money somehow. Don't be silly. That maniac wouldn't have stopped bidding at $10,000. Well, I suppose it was my fault that Uncle Billy died. Well, it was your idea to send him the money. Well, you didn't see anything wrong with it at the time. A couple of bad breaks, and I take it out on you. You're not a heel. Darling, we earn that money, and nothing's going to stop our getting it. Come on now, heads up, sweet. It just hurts me so when you talk that way. We'll never quarrel again, ever. <laughs> well, our next stop, Sunny Day. Good old Sunny Day. I think I've got a map in my room. We better find out where it is. What is it? How's it, partner? Come on in. What's the matter? Cat got your turn? Hello, Blackie. 
Ruth, this is Blackie Clayton. What's on your mind? I uh, just heard you saying something about you might go to Sunnydale. Quite a trip. OK for money? We'll make it, thanks. Mm. I could use some cash. In fact, I could use plenty. I was just thinking maybe you might need a partner. No partner. That's too bad, because I already decided different. Uh, by the way, I got uh, a little something here might interest you. A little item I cut out of the paper. What is it? Read it. Well, about you. Dave Beerman, Chicago. Remember telling me you sent him that dough to keep for you? Friend of yours or something. So that's just a name I made up. Oh. Was it? Well, that guy's dead. Somebody cut his throat. Where's that money? Get wise to yourself, Jimmy. Quit stalling me. Now, I've declared myself in for a third, and I'd advise you to like it. Well, how about it? The answer is still no. He's asking for trouble, kid. Better talk to him. Mr. Roberts. Ruth, it's Mr. Roberts. Come right in, Mr. Roberts. Let me take your hat. Thanks, Jimmy. How are you, Ruth? Oh, fine, thank you. Uh, oh, gee. Gee, we're awfully glad to see you. Oh, uh, thanks. Well, how's the vacuum cleaner business? Oh, fine. Okay. Made any sales? Well, not exactly, but we have prospects. Well, I hope they're good prospects. You see, you have violated your parole coming down here. That's why I dropped in. Thought maybe you may have misunderstood the rules. Oh, but I thought we had permission to go anywhere in the state. As long as you keep working, Ruth. Oh. Well, won't you sit down, Mr. Roberts? No, thanks. I'd only stay a moment. <clears throat> now, when are you kids going to hand over that money? Have you taken a good look in the mirror lately? Why, yes. Why? That money's doing things to you. It's beginning to show in your faces. Little hard lines that weren't there before. Bitternesses. Go take a good look. What? You'd be surprised what a few facials would do. If you were to spend all of that money on facials, it wouldn't clean you up inside. That's the idea. It's doing things to you. You're not happy. Well, I guess I'll be drifting. Oh, please don't go yet. Oh, I've said about enough. <laughs> Think it over. Thanks. I hate to see you kids losing the things that money can't buy back. Better get back to your district as quick as you can. That's a tip. Well, <clears throat> be seeing you. Why didn't you talk? I wanted to keep him here. Oh, Jimmy, I'm afraid of that man. There's something about hey, him. Kitty, that... you do. He's gone. And so is our money. The keys to the car. Yep, they're gone too. Read it and weep. See you in Sunnydale, Blackie. Come on. Just stop him. Yell to Roberts. That would mean the police. We can't do it. Well, if you hadn't been so smart, we'd still have that money. Let me keep the money, Jimmy. Give me that watch. Oh, please don't. Father gave it to me. It's the most precious thing. So precious that it'll get us about five bucks in a hawk shop, and money isn't even worth a nickel. We have to hit the road to Sunnydale, and we've got to eat on the way. Oh, no. Everything has gone wrong. Let's go to Roberts and end it. You're not going to see Roberts. You're sticking with me whether you like it or not. Jimmy, Roberts was right. I want to quit. 
I have an awful feeling that we're rushing blindly through the darkness to some horrible end. And I've got a feeling you've turned yellow. Oh, please don't say that, Jimmy. That isn't you. Listen, you can get off at the first stop. I'm sick of you and your whining ways. I should have known better than to go in on a deal like this with you. Half the men in prison are there because of a woman. Yes, and all the women are there because of a man. Oh, please, Jimmy. Please, won't you understand? We were there because of each other. Because we loved each other, and we still do. Of course we do. We'll be all right as soon as we get our fingers on that money. Oh, no, Jimmy. We've just been kidding ourselves. When we get to Sunnydale, Blackie will be waiting for us. And maybe Robert. Oh, I'm afraid of Blackie. I have a feeling that he's going to try and kill you or that you're going to try and kill him. Why don't you get some sleep? In the daylight, everything will look different. No, Jimmy. It'll never look any different. snap out of it. You're getting off here. We're all getting off here. Come on. Come on, you two. Well? Stealing rides. All right. <clears throat> this girl with you? Well, yes, you see. What's the idea? Well, we were on our way here to Sunnydale, and somebody stole our car and all our money. You know anybody here? To tell the truth, we were planning to report to you. You see, we're parole prisoners. Nice day, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's wonderful. I'll keep these tickets for you, if you don't mind. You can pick them up on your way out of here. Unusual paroles. Guess you've had enough advice without any from me. Well, look to you. Let me know when you find a place to stay. Thank you. Can you tell us where Mrs. Foster's place is? I sure can. When you walk out of here, you go straight down to the bridge. When you turn to your left, you'll see a narrow road with an arrow pointing to the Foster guest farm. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Give me a long distance, please. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> time for cinnamon. It's in there. All we have to do is grab it and get out. Remember what we once said, without hurting anyone. Good morning. Well, good morning. Are you Mrs. Foster? Uh, yes, child. Were you aiming to stay here? Well, uh, yes. Come right on in. I found it. Where? In the living room. Come on. Oh, but Jimmy. She went outside and there's nobody else in the house. Hurry. I'm afraid. Oh, what's there to be afraid of? Come on. Give me the police department, please. Let me talk to Chief. There's Miss Foster. Hello, Ira. There's Mama. Yes, they came. Why? You don't say. Listen, dear, bring home about four extra pork chops for dinner. That's right. Well, I thought you folks were upstairs resting. Feeling better? Oh, much better, thank you. We, we thought perhaps we could help you. Oh, there's nothing much to do now. You can help get dinner and then tidy up afterwards. Uh, by the way, there's some uh, apple pie and a pitcher of cream in a cooler. <laughs> in case you're interested. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And now go right on in there and help yourself. <laughs> and here's another thing. 
Don't let anybody ever talk to you about the good old days. What good old days? Ira. Folks used to get up at daybreak, milk the cows and feed the chickens and chop wood, chores, they call it. Well, I remember Ira. when... Ira. Well? Would anybody like another piece of pie? Oh, not for me, thanks. I'm right up to here. Jimmy? Well? Spoken like a man. Now, what was I saying? Uh... Nothing much, dear. You were just getting yourself warmed up. Sometimes you get so busy talking, you forget what you're going to say. Well, what was I going to say? You're going to tell the children the folks coming over tonight might make good vacuum cleaner prospects. Exactly. I was just leading up to it. <laughs> I heard you beat all. Now, uh, what was I going to say? That bell. Every time it rings, I almost jump out of my skin. Sit still, Mama. I'll go. Coming. Coming. <clears throat> Chief Foster, I'm Mike Roberts. Well, well, Mr. Roberts, I'm glad to meet you. You got here sooner than I expected. They're out in the kitchen just finishing supper. <laughs> Did you say something about supper? Well, I'll guarantee to fill you up if you don't mind taking pot luck. <laughs> well, now, I hope I'm not going to put you folks in any undue trouble. Oh, no trouble at all, Mr. Roberts. Mama, I want you to meet Mr. Roberts. Mrs. Foster. It's mighty nice to know you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. The pleasure's mine. Mr. Roberts is down here to attend to a little business. It may take a couple of days. He's going to stay with us. Well, how nice. I told Mr. Roberts you'd fix some supper for him in a very few minutes. I should say. Mr. Roberts, this is Miss Holden, Mr. Caldwell. Always glad to meet old friends. <laughs> oh, bless my heart. You know them. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sit down. I'll have some supper warmed up for you in a jiffy. Thanks. And while you're fixing it, I think I'll have a talk with these two youngsters here. I think I have something outside that might interest you. <clears throat> Come on. I'm a hungry man. Don't forget to call me. <laughs> You sent for him? Yep. They seem like such nice young folks. What'd they go to prison for? For stealing $100,000. <gasps> Land sakes. What would a buddy do with that much money? Well, how did you... The man who was driving it tried to rob a store this afternoon. Yeah? A couple of highway patrolmen happened to be passing. The thief got away and left your car outside. Well, you don't think that we... Why didn't you tell me that Blackie Clayton stole your car? Well, how did you know? It's my business to know things, Jimmy. Blackie was your cellmate. Blackie's trying to get a cutting on that money. The closer you get to that money, Jimmy, the tougher it's going to get. Blackie on your trail. The police after you. I wouldn't be in your shoes for all the tea in China. Why don't you talk some sense into his head? Why don't you mind your own business? That's exactly what I am doing. I'm trying to save you kids from being picked up for violation of your parole. Not so easy, either. But there's still a way out for you. Give up the money and get to work. Jimmy, please. The vacuum cleaners are still in the car. Although why Blackie didn't sell them, I don't know. But that's your good luck. Mr. Roberts! Coming. Now, think it over. Sister. Take it easy, kid. Nobody's gonna hurt you. How's tricks? Very well, thank you. Why, thank me. Cigarette? No. What's on your mind? Oh, a little matter of a hundred thousand dollars. It's here somewhere, and uh, I happen to want it. All of it. Aren't you getting a trifle ambitious all of a sudden? Yeah, in a small way. I'm in a tight spot right now, and I'm tired of fooling. Suppose it came to a matter of choice. Jimmy of the hundred thousand. What would you say then? Jimmy, of course. Well, it's your choice. There's no accounting for taste. I'll meet you out there back of the orchard about midnight. Okay? Okay. You're a smart kid, sister, so let's not have any tricks. And keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Understand? What's the idea of all the gloom? How do you feel? Well, I, I feel all right. Jimmy, 
Do you remember when I went out on the back porch to empty the strainer? Oh, sure, why? Blackie was out there. What did he say? He threatened to kill you unless, unless I gave him the money. All of it. He said he'd be out there tonight. Oh, that's just a lot of talk. He's only trying to scare you. No, he wasn't, Jimmy. He meant it. What good is that money going to do if anything should happen to you? Now, nothing's going to happen. Jimmy. Jimmy, please let's find Roberts now. Robert's gone to a movie. We're going to leave with that money right now. Come on, get your things together. Jimmy, we're right where we were two years ago. No, we're not. We're where we wanted to be two years ago. Oh, listen, hon, I know how you feel, but we can't turn back now. We earned that money, two whole years of our lives, and we're going to keep it. Otherwise, what would we be? A couple of scared little frogs jumping back into a muddy pool. We're not like that. Oh, Ruth, I love you. I love us together. I want us to be married and happy. If we don't go through with this, now we'll hate each other one way or another. We've got to finish like we began, together. All right, Jimmy. I'll get the money. You go down to the car. I'll get it. Don't you trust me? <laughs> well, we'll get it together, then. I said, don't you trust me? Well, of course I do. Oh, please, Jimmy. Please let me get the money. I want to prove to you that, that we will go on together, like you said. Whether it's life, or death, or prison, we'll be together. That's right. Together. Come on, now. I thought you'd never get here. I almost bumped into the forces. I told them we'd be right back. You slide in first. Have the money. to kill me first. That can be done, too. Come on, come on. We're wasting time. Jimmy, please let him No. Have it. Wait. It's over there under that tree. Thanks, kid. Stand back. And keep back.
shall we go? In a moment, when I get through telling you what I think of all this, I've listened to you for the last two years. I've done everything you've asked, but now this ends it. A moment ago, until I stepped in, it was your life or his. Well, what I have to say now concerns our lives, and I'm stepping in again. Jimmy, we're giving up this money. Wait a minute. Oh, I've waited long enough. I know what you're going to say, but it's our money. But that isn't the point at all. Why, well, even if we get away, we'll be hunted. We'll never know a moment of real peace. We'll always be on the run. Oh, Jimmy, I don't want to be on the run. I want to stand still. I want to marry you and, and stop running. Oh, Jimmy, let's stand still. Let's go back and give the money to Roberts and, and laugh again. Oh. Well, here I am, and you kids can start laughing right now. Better than the facial, huh? <laughs> Here's the money, Mr. Roberts. Thanks, Jimmy. Don't thank me. I've never been so glad to get rid of anything in my life. I'm glad to get the money back, of course, but that's not why I thank you. You see, I've always believed in you kids from the very start, and you've lived up to my belief. That's why I said thanks. Thank you for believing in it. You know, the reason we took that money is because we didn't believe in ourselves. But no more. We're all through with shortcuts. They're too tough. From now on, we'll earn our happiness. Together? Always. Always.